So, good evening and welcome to the August 21st Select Board meeting in the town room at Town Hall. We have a fairly uh, abbreviated uh, menu of items tonight. We will go into executive session a little bit later, but I do want to check with my colleagues and see if there's any announcements or agenda items that we need to address first. Seeing none, then I think we'll... Uh, Head into where we're at. I, I don't see anyone here for public comment, so I think we'll start with our, our first item that we know we need to do, and that will be uh, a proclamation of September as Hunger Action Month. And I believe we have a guest here to tell us about uh, the proclamation and a little bit about the, the circumstances. Okay. Since my name is there, I thought I need to do this. Please do. Thank you. So um, we, I think this is our first. Um, Hunger Month proclamation that we've done, and uh, Ms. Brubecker had um, invited me to meet with her, which we did, and we talked about this, and she had some uh, examples from some other communities, and then um, reworked this for Amherst, and um, I'm kind of excited that we're doing this, and she's going to tell us the thinking behind it, and then when you're ready, Mr. Slaughter. We can actually read the proclamation, but um, why don't you take it away? All right. I'm Cynthia Brubaker, and representing the League of Women Voters of Amherst. To bring you a proclamation, I think it went out in your packets. Yes. Um, and you want me to read this after the statement. Um, this month is National Recognition of Hunger and Food Insecurity. Um, and being recognized throughout the country and also right here in our own community. Towns and cities across the United States have passed similar resolutions and proclamations this summer. Uh, in the spring of 2017, the League of Women Voters joined with the Amherst Survival Center to present a community program which was entitled, A Look at Threats to the Safety Net. Following this program, several of us who were involved met and talked about how to move this from just informational to action. We met with a group of organizations and joined together, which was a wonderful example of community collaboration. Those organizations included the League of Women Voters, uh, Amherst Survival Center, the Food Bank of Western Mass, the Amherst Health Department, and ION, which stands for the Interfaith Opportunities Network here in Amherst. Our goal was to reach out to the residents of the Amherst area and encourage them as organizations, faith groups, and individuals to take action to meet food needs of people here in our own community. In particular, the League of Women Voters and, and the interest that we have in this has to do with the proposed federal budget, which uh, is rather, as it's proposed, is rather draconian in the uh, cuts that are going to be recommended in programs like WIC, which is Women, Infants, and Children Food Program, SNAP, Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, which was food stamps, Meals on Wheels, and School Lunch and Breakfast Programs. They could all suffer, affecting those who are the most vulnerable, young, the poor, and the elderly. So as you know, all of you know, uh, right here in Amherst, we experience a large amount of food insecurity. With an estimated 30% of our kids in public school on free and reduced lunch, we know that there are families struggling to provide adequate food right here in this community. <clears throat> we all need to be reminded that food is one of our basic human needs. And we ask that you, our select board, make this a public acknowledgement and recognition so that we can continue to be vigilant in addressing the human needs of those here in Amherst. And I, I have the um, proclamation. Uh, whereas hunger and poverty are issues of grave concern in the United States, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and in Amherst community, and whereas the town of Amherst is committed to taking steps to raise awareness about the needs to combat hunger in every part of the community and to provide resources accessible to those in need, 
and whereas the town of Amherst is committed to working with a variety of organizations about the role and importance of food distribution in addressing the food needs in our community. These groups include, but are not limited to, the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts, the Amherst Survival Center, Not Bread Alone, Area Churches, Synagogues, and Mosques, the Senior Center, UMass Meals on Wheels, and the Amherst Regional Public Schools. And whereas the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts distributed 10 million pounds of food last year in Western Massachusetts, and the Survival Center in Amherst served over 17,000 free lunches during the past year to residents of this area. <clears throat> and whereas almost 32% of Amherst elementary school children are on free and reduced lunch, now therefore be it resolved that the select board of the town of Amherst hereby proclaim September 2017 Hunger Action Month and bring this to the attention of the residents of Amherst. Are there questions or comments? Yes. I just wanted to thank you for bringing this forward in a format that shows very directly our local impact. So thank you for yeah. describing that in Welcome. detail. Um, I, real <clears throat> I realized in having you read it, that's probably the text you submitted to Ms. Puppel in the manager's office. She turned it into a proclamation, and I just would like to give you this because there were just a few prepositions and things that oh, changed good. slightly. I think you'll, you'll still agree, but yes. you might as well have a copy because there were a couple words. Great, but, thank you. Yeah, that's great. Okay, thank you. Okay. Third into 30%. So um, I would be happy to make that motion of, as long as Ms. Brubecker is, is happy to accept those minor word changes. <clears throat> so I move to proclaim September 2017 as Hunger Action Month and to bring this to the attention of the residents of Amherst. Do a second. Yes. I, I could second, but then I have a question. Okay. So we'll take it as a second and that'll second be, and discuss. Uh, and discuss. So, so the motion's a little weird. Um, and bring this to the attention of the residents of Amherst. What? what? <laughs> we don't do that. We sign things, and then Ms. Pumple puts them up on the website. And uh, we, we do have variations on this language. This one's perhaps a little more bald than some others in terms of just saying and bring this to the attention. Um, we just did that by having a proclamation yeah. at a meeting on TV. <laughs> I'd just as soon take off and to bring this to the attention of the residents of Amherst just because we're not going to do any, I mean, we think it's great and it's going to go on the website if Ms. Puppel continues to do that, but I'm not sure what else we would do and I don't want to imply that we're holding an event or anything. The mover would consider that a friendly amendment. It doesn't really matter. Change the motion and just, the proclamation? No. Uh, no, just after the word, after hun Hunger Action Month and the motion, she put a period across the yeah. No, the, the proclamation's great. By signing the proclamation, we have we done the doing, action. <laughs> yes. And the proclamation talks about mm -hmm. bringing attention to the issue, which is great. So is there other discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Joe's I didn't read my motion, she <laughs> And that would be unanimous. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, thank you for doing that. It's really appreciated. I believe that's in our signature folder, but... We'll discuss that in a bit. Good. Thank you very much. Sure, Mr. Mersbeck wants to help draw attention to it. So I think the next thing we'll uh, do here, just uh, for sake of s expediency, is go to our licenses, uh, public way and meter parking reservation section. And we have two, I think, um, licenses. I think one is a license and one is a, is a modification of existing license. So I, I would suggest if we could just knock those out, because I think the other conversations are going to be longer and more involved and so if we could just take care of those real quick I think we could uh, get to the meat of the matter as they say so if someone would Sorry. I just have to question. yes please so it sure. looks like one that we just did last week is coming back for a modification that's correct because the hours presented on the application did not match what he actually wanted so we have to wondering <laughs> and we... okay. that solves that mystery yes exactly we we had noted it seemed unusual but seems less unusual now if we Spur, do you want to read them? I would be happy to read the top of the campus one. 
Okay. okay. So <clears throat> I move to approve the application of Top of the Campus Inc. for a special license to serve wine and malt beverages at a reception to be held at UMass Amherst in room E470 of South College on August 29, 2017, from 2.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Kimberly McAllister, Director. Second. Second, yes. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And so we have another one, the modification. I, I can do that because I'm okay. here for the first one. Um, I move to approve a change in hours for the secondhand sales license of Robert L. Chestnut doing business as Catch My Thrift, uh, 11 East Pleasant Street from Thursday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. to Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Sundays, 12 to 5 p.m. Robert L. Chestnut, owner. Um, I think there should be an and before the word too much. I mean, some some place in here. So an and, the, 10 a.m. to, um, to 5 p.m. The, the from is what you voted last time. The two is what the new, the change is. Oh, okay. So she thought you should. From that to that. Okay. Right. I, I was thinking from where the hours yeah. from. Okay. So what you voted so what last I read is okay. week was the. Okay. Thursday so, to Sunday, 10 10 to 5. 5. so the words are right, but my emphasis in reading it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. All right. So I'll in short, Thursday to Sunday, 10 to 5 is what we voted last week, mm -hmm. seeking to change it to Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and on Sundays from 12 to 5. So I'll second, and then I have questions. So just right. um, <clears throat> it, from last, whenever we did this, it was last time or the, the 14th. time before. The, the 14th when you weren't here. Just um, We were kind of mulling over like, well, why didn't he ask for more hours? And he doesn't have to be open then, but he would have that flexibility. So I, now I get it. Yes. So my questions being that I wasn't here and no, I did not watch the tape and no, I have no intention of doing so <laughs> are um, two. One is that I would presume like with all other licenses that just as the police was, the police chief was involved in approving it last time it was contingent. They would not have actually, we don't vote, say it's contingent. What we know is that the office just doesn't release the actual license until the police chief. I assume the police chief will be notified of these change in hours rather than just we approved it one way and then we don't show it to the chief of police again. I presume that the chief does see it again. So I just wanted to verify that. And then after we vote, I have a completely different question about secondhand licenses, but I don't want it to muddy the situation with okay. this with this group. Right. So is there further discussion on this particular motion? No, this one's already secondhand. All right. Uh, in that case, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. And so your other question. My other Hamilton. question is, as I have brought up more quietly in the past, but will now just bring up publicly, is that I would like us to have staff look into why the hospice shop does not have a secondhand license, because it's my understanding that the reason for secondhand licenses has to do with, at least back in the olden days, was because of them not acting as fences for stolen goods, and that way the police knew about them and knew they could go and talk to them about materials that might be brought in and I believe that just for consistency's sake I don't know of a reason why they don't have one and if we could get that settled before it's time for license renewal it would be nice mm -hmm. to have them people. just be part of the the hospice shop that's next to what used to be hangar and um, down near the bicycle exchange what used to be the Drive. Daily Hampshire Gazette before your time <laughs> actually so or between your times yes between your times <laughs> All right, so thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. So next up um, is our action discussion items. First up is our town manager performance evaluation review revisions of composite evaluation draft summary. Uh, I sent out earlier today, and hopefully this got to the website. I didn't check to make sure it had, but certainly there's a, hopefully a printed copy with you. Uh, tonight, um, I had put draft back on it. <laughs> <laughs> until we finish our conversation this evening It'll, and page numbers and a few other things. But mostly what I did was any of those more substantial sort of edits that we were uh -huh. wanting, I had put in highlights so it was a little easier to spot, the typographical sort of things and the uh, things of that nature. I, I just made those changes without, uh, without highlighting them. So I was hoping if either of you had any other comments relative to those or any other wordsmithing we wanted to do relative to this. And if you haven't had a moment to read it, I'll 
there's not so much that you mm -hmm. couldn't read now. So if you'd like to take a moment. Would you hand that to him? I think when a copy and paste happened, that the got added in the bullet points, and I don't know why. Let's see. Oh. It's really minor, but it, it makes it look different than the other documents, and I don't know why it would look different mm -hmm. than the other documents. Right. It could have a the, but it's, then it's, they would all need a the. It's a stray the. It's a stray the. <laughs> Which we can edit out. Inserted itself into the yeah. bullet points. Yeah. yeah. Um, hand that back to her. So, Mr. Slaughter, thank you for putting it in yellow. I did read this this, yes. or this afternoon, and it was really better than a kind of track changes because then the document was cleaned up and it made it really easy. And I thought on my read through, it did reflect the discussion we had last week, and that you incorporated those comments in uh, very seamlessly. So that was my overall. I agree. Okay, fantastic. I think it's good to go. So then I will, uh, either after our meeting tonight or early tomorrow, I will take out the highlights, take the word draft <laughs> off. Um, get I believe rid of the errant the. Get rid of the, the uh, extra the, and, <clears throat> and uh, we'll make it the formal summary for Mr. Bachman for his for Is there any action the board has to take? You know, I was just thinking that, that, you know, we could make a motion. We could. We don't have this. one on our sheet, but I think, do we want to formally adopt the? Why don't we just, on the fly, make up a, a motion? The summary. I will try. Um, All right. That we adopt or approve, pick your whatever, which one you prefer, the um, FY17 town manager performance evaluation um, dated August 21st, 2017. Second. Is there further discussion? Is there approve or adopt? Would you prefer? Uh, what do you want? Adopt. 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 We don't approve. I think adopt. adopt. Adopt or accept, not not oh. really approve. I don't know. Go with adopt. I think we could argue any of them. <laughs> what sounds good because we'll do it again next time. Why don't we say? Mr. Slaughter, help us just pick a word. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaning toward adopt. Adopt. All right. So there was a motion and a second. Any other discussion besides the word that we used <laughs> to, <laughs> to take ownership of this? Yeah, I don't think we've done this in the past, but it seemed, does seem like a, sense of, a reasonably sensible thing to do right. to just show that, yep, it's done. Right. So, there's no formal. harm in doing it either. No. Right, exactly. It's All a right nice then. way of ending it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And that's unanimous. So we will tidy up the loose ends and, mm -hmm. and get that formally in the place. So the next piece of work we have uh, before our bigger piece uh, is a, a bit of uh, discussion potentially about fiscal year 18 goals. Um, we're continuing on with those, I believe, in our packet last time and hopefully this time as well. Ms. Puppel had incorporated a couple of comments that were made at the meeting of the 14th, I want to say. Not in the packet. It's not in the packet. It was, would be in last time's packet. So mm. I don't know if anyone has that with them or not. Or two times ago, was it? But I did I did receive from, from, from Mr. Steinberg some comments that he had. That's um, right. He was going to send you right. his. Which I have not read. I just have them safely mm -hmm. tucked away. Um, but if, ah, here they are. But if anyone had uh, anything else that they wanted to mention at this time around goals, or if we would like, we can, I mean, we, you know, it's our own deadline, quite frankly. So given that there are just the three of us here tonight, we can certainly, if there are things that you want to mention, we can make note of, and then we'll have this conversation continue, I think, is my guess, but yes. So I had, I had two questions. One was in associate, I appreciate the additions that were made. And um, item six on page two is assess the need for town involvement in Fort River School feasibility study. It's not feeling like the right phrasing that we're looking for there. Yeah, that we, was. We, that, that, I figured that was a, you know, put a placeholder there. And, it, it definitely and let's was. let's try and. Because I think what we're trying to do, I don't know what your conversation was, but I think what we're trying to do is show that the town is going to be involved in Fort River Feasibility Study and the, 
the questions are around the resources, like the finance people that might need to be involved, the buildings and facilities people, and also any select board discussion or policy making associated with it as where you know like input as well. Right. I think if, yeah, if I think that I go ahead. I think that I think that was mine, and I think when we were generating these, and I don't have that, I didn't bring the document, but um, we were really calling them thought bubbles because, okay. and so it wasn't. It, we were throwing out ideas, but it got um, incorporated from I think Mr. Zomek's notes into the modified document, and um, my sentiment in, in um, putting that out and having attended the first. Um, listening session on this was that the um, there were opportunities um, that the town and you know we're all the town but that um, other you know uh, not uh, understanding the um, role of the school committee in this but that the t um, other resources of the town could um, could and should that's not the wording for the thing, but um, come to bear to help assist in um, defining the scope of that project and helping uh, to get the request for proposal or request for proposals out and uh, would work could work um, cooperatively with the school board and the superintendent in, in if, you know in assisting in that being a you know, more focused process. I think the other piece of uh, the other note that I think Mr. Steinberg made in conjunction with that was just um, making sure there's a coordination of effort regarding the fact that this is a large capital yeah. project and there are others in the pipeline that we want to, you know, it, we want to make sure that that it impacts, yeah, you know, how those interplay with each other over time and and mm -hmm. how that financing works, yeah. various yeah. options available there all are. Um, kept in, in the forefront of the folks' minds as they work on the school project so they're not operating completely in isolation and that sort of thing. So that was a piece of it too, yeah, is that the, coordination the, of effort as well as right. just being which, resources which, available. Which is different than assess the need right. for assistance. Right. Both of those things, but it, yeah. So, That's the intention, yes. So I'm looking for, I guess, suggestions from Mr. Bachman as to language that incorporates the things that we're talking about here and also to the level of while it will be a school committee creation in terms of proposals and in terms of their committee, which we should probably reference specifically here at some point because we know that's a thing they're gonna do. They're just still developing how they're gonna do it. Um, based on everything we've said, including particularly the fact of coordination with other projects and in terms of the big picture, because this is a very young school committee and a superintendent who's been in that position has been previously an excellent assistant superintendent and this was his project but it wasn't so much within the context of all the other things that were going on you mean I think it's important in terms of experience yeah and so exactly not in terms of just term, in terms of years of dealing with town politics <laughs> not because they aren't all excellent at what they're doing and I'm so grateful they're all there whether it's the acting superintendent or the um, school committee members is that it would be a mistake to a, for them to work in isolation from the town manager, the select board giving some advice, et cetera. Whether or not they put a select board member on the building committee is a different issue. You know, it may just be staff, it may be select board. I'm not wedded to any particular model at this point, but I was hoping, and that was one of the purposes of their open discussions is to make sure there is coordination back and forth, that it's not working in a vacuum so that people who don't pay attention to the school's issues on a day-to-day -day basis, which there are fewer of now based on what we've recently been through, but that so that people don't kind of forget that that's happening at the same time to make sure it's getting attention from all sides. So whether it's provide support or it's, because it's not initiating, but it's I'm not sure what the wording is. <clears throat> like ensure the participation of town officials in this? Yeah. Is that what your goal is? That really is what we're looking for. I like getting the word coordination in there without, Yeah. I don't want to imply that we're taking over the process. Right, but, absolutely. Um,
Well, and even, you know, if, if just referring to the docket, re immediately preceding that is the other one that we sort of added there. And, <clears throat> you know, it says if charter vote passes in March 2018, town manager to create transition plan. That's absolutely a placeholder sort of phrase. I mean, it's a much more, it's a much deeper, richer conversation we're going to have to have about what we're thinking about there. And, and we had a little bit of that conversation a week ago, but, but by no means got into the depth of it. But, you know, just recognizing what, what efforts are required to, to make that happen and how that will potentially prevent other things that are on the school list from happening because there's only so many hours in the day and you know you know it sort of switches over like you know a big <laughs> switch being thrown and so there's some preparation to make that happen and so how to how to make that uh time and effort worthwhile for for the manager so he's not trying to do two jobs instead of just one Yes. Oh, he already has two jobs. <laughs> we're just talking about three or four. Right. So one of the things I also think we were trying to get at when we talked about that on July 24th was that there was going to be, and I, this is one piece of it, is that there's going to need to be actual input from the actual town manager as to how this will really work on right. the ground versus all the theories about how it'll work and what the charter commission proposal says about the transition. Then there's all the actual meat and potatoes that needs to get done. But in addition, prior to that, we talked about on July 24th the fact that there was no question but that the town manager was going to be doing some sort of research to provide information as needed to help people figure things out as we're going along, whether it's for the select board's benefit for us to better understand a position we may or may not take, or for the community to better understand, practically speaking, this is this is what our town government act says. This is what we actually do now because it fits within that envelope and this is the kind of thing we're talking about over here. So we just we weren't really sure how much he'd get sucked into doing that, but I think we expected that based on all his professional experiences there we would be looking to him as a resource in a way that in a normal year, you know, he just does all the things he does, but we were adding on, it's like there's this extra thing happening that people will need more understanding of how things work and how things might work. Right, right, exactly. And so, and, and I think the, the purpose behind making a goal of this, I think, was twofold. One is to be explicit about the fact that, that it may be necessary to do that and that also that that has a certain time commitment to it that would prevent potentially other things right. from getting done. And so how to, we'll have to think about how we wordsmith that to sort of frame it appropriately because if the charter doesn't pass, then obviously that won't be necessary and we'll have expectations that the rest mm -hmm. of the goals get completed as written, et cetera, and, et cetera. And we'd be happy, but we, that's six months away. We'd be halfway through the goal setting year. So right. at least it's, it, it, by putting it on there explicitly, then it's something that the manager gets measured on and in a sense gets credit. For what I was gonna, I was gonna ask Miss Brewer if she felt that um, the way that stated as added to the goals captured what you were just talking about as sort of the you know getting help with the nuts and bolts. Yeah, the the things that I didn't really didn't I should have gotten back to the goals for this meeting, but will in the future. What I'd like to do is is go back through and and see which goals should maybe be, if not dropped. Um, because we've added some other ones, um, maybe move down in importance um, where, yeah, those would be nice to do, but they're not as important as, you know, these five things. And we, we don't always, um, I don't know if we signal well enough what's more important than other things, because I think it's easy to pile on a lot of stuff, but right. um, some of it's just not humanly possible in a work week. So I I th that notion of priority is one question. I mean, I, I think, you know, just having you said that, I was just thinking that perhaps within the, the different areas that we may want to generally put things that are a bit more important near the top. And But I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see as a committee when, when all of us are here to think about whether or not we want to kind of rank them a little bit. I mean, I don't think we'll be able to put them in one is the most important and two is the second most important and three is the th I don't think we'll get to that level of detail, but to to broadly say the top three of six is generally where we want you to spend more effort than, than the bottom three might be a valuable thing to, to have uh, as a guide for the manager as, as he moves ahead this year. And um, 
But I do think there's some revision of some existing goals or some refinement of some of them at this point to narrow them in some respects might be helpful as well because there's aspects that are done and now it's the sort of next stage with some things and updating. Yeah. So I think there are all of those those kinds of edits we might undertake. Um, yes. And so I'll, I'll, in thinking about all of this, right, is that if you and the town manager would work together and figure out a way of maybe you just have like a charter, like a charter that's number five that says something and then it has an A and a B, like a specific transition plan will have to happen if the vote passes. But prior to that, a right. bunch of other stuff may well end up on his plate because we'll all be coming and asking him questions that we wouldn't do if he was a brand new town manager and didn't know any better. Um, and so, and therefore, like you indicate, not everything else is gonna get done. And so somehow breaking that out to make that clear. And one of, you know, I, I gave a little pushback last time we talked about this in terms of when you weren't here, Mr. Bachelman, about prioritizing the goals and the push-pull between the five of us and, well, how do you get everybody's goals in here? And then if you say some are more important than others, even though we all know, practically speaking, you can't do everything all the time. Along those lines, I, th I wonder if we want to include in here somehow or rather than treating it purely as a process question, if there's a way to reflect in here, that we should be checking back on these goals more frequently so that we can say, you know what? It totally makes sense to us. You're working on all this stuff. You're not, you're not gonna get to this in the next six months. Like, who are we kidding? This doesn't even, it doesn't make sense to try and push that as the priority. This is clearly the priority. And if we had, rather than having to wait and say at the end of the year, well, of course, why not just do it like every quarter and right. say, not that you'd have to write a 12-page report on where that you are, but just to, for all of us to get a sense of right. which things are actually reasonably embraceable, which things have had new things come up with them or whatever. Right. And and then that would help us figure out. And then we could, we could say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Totally. Don't even worry about this thing. And I think a, a perfect example of that is, is the planning for our net replacement in conformance with October 2016 Comcast contract. Yeah. I think is what that's supposed to say. But anyway... Um, you know, had we revisited these mid-year, we would have probably either reframed that a little bit or dropped it or changed it in some way to have it have more meaning for us. Because I think, you know, that was one that I think, depending on who it was, had a much different sense of what they felt that meant. And mm -hmm. so that's the other thing is that we can, you know, if we're six months into the year or three months in and then six months and then nine months, you know, we can uh, articulate our definitions a bit more clearly because we're more into the nitty gritty of it and we can see that oh this has become a much 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 bigger thing than any of us anticipated or other things have taken precedence that were unknown at the beginning of the year or whatever mm -hmm. and so I think that's a that's a, a fantastic suggestion that uh, we look at perhaps a quarterly review mm -hmm. um, and again not to do a, a, a full-blown report but just I think as much for our own purposes to review them and oh, then when, yeah. when we're at the six month you know, we'll, we'll do this, the mid-year sort of check in with you and, and sort of look to that uh, sort of feedback on where you're at on the, on the goals that you gave us last year, mid-year, and then. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not exactly a year anyway, so we right. might want to just take, like, pick two specific check-in times. Mm -hmm. right. the, the charter vote doesn't happen until the end of March, so that's too late, really, because then we're into other things. So maybe like a, you know, three or four months from now. After fall town meeting. Yeah, like sometime. maybe like the end of December or 1st yep. of January uh, or like an, another check-in point because I think you're right. I think the point you're pointing up, bringing up is that it's not just a thing that happens on March 20th or whenever the election right. yeah. is. There's going to be stuff in advance right. there yeah. already is. So I think it's, it's wise to sort of say we are going to be reviewing this cooperatively on, on, on this at this meeting and this this meeting too, like to pick two dates or three dates or whatever we want to do. And yeah, because I'm, right now, I mean, it's, when you say quarterly, it's like you know we're in, we're practically in September. So when do we when does the you know we talking so about three months and then three months December then, early then, March or something? You yeah. figure it out. And yeah, it right. could be a subset yeah, like of that. the manager's report. Yeah, we could put it in, put yeah. it, not lock in the dates. You know, yeah. with this, yeah. whatever. Um, yes. We could even say. 
October, because if we're getting this done in September, like end of October, as we're going into town meeting, this is what it turned out the town meeting warrant looks like. It's been this huge effort over here instead of over here, like we hope to. And so this is how we're shifting. And then as time goes along, I'm thinking of it as more of an informal thing, like I said, rather than, you know, like part of the town manager's yeah. report sort of thing, rather than, you know, here's another five page memo that I had to write to respond to this. But if there's something that really changes direction, then we could document that so that you would feel like, hey, you, I told you <laughs> this is what was going to happen. Right. And we said, and you agreed this is what was going to happen yeah. because then nobody's surprised, you know, later on in the process. So. So I think the other thing I think about is that we should pick, when we pick dates, which I think we can do when all five of us are here and we think about it more deeply, is we also want to be cognizant of the other sort of big things that are in your mm -hmm. calendar. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, we're not going to pick the, whatever it is, 14th or 15th of January because oh, yeah, you budget. have a budget but too. It, right it makes sense to do right after that because you exactly. have just right. seen the development of a budget and right. priorities and you could say, well, you did this, you didn't do it. You know, it'd be right. a good time to have that interaction. Right. So we want to just time it so that it's not conflicting with some of those kind of milestone events right. that happen. Right. So um, any, yeah, anytime we put a new little process in place, we have to sort of iron out the kinks. Of exactly. Right. Exactly. All right. Well, I think that's... So right the, now, like so. October and January. I, Ms. Brewer, For, if I might, yes, um, you said October, but I was thinking after the special town meeting is over in the fall because things come up that then need to be attended okay. to. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not wedded Could to It Could be that, at the end of said, November. Yeah, October seems, you know, okay. really, we're already in September practically. So okay. I was thinking as soon as we, some soon after finishing whatever action, because then we'll know what actions are gonna come out of that meeting. Right, and so even though, like you said, quarterly is not really what fits, and so it makes sense end of November, mid to end of November, and of course there's the holidays in there, and then end of January kind of gives us a sense of yeah, we early, got through the big yeah, budget February, thing yeah. in November, we found out all the things we have to do after town meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does kind of fit, and then then we will have the charter vote, and then there'll be the discussion uh, end of March, beginning of April. We'll go with that. We'll, we'll, um, <clears throat> so as far as next steps, I think, um, let's see, we meet again on the 30th. And that's a pretty big agenda. And that's a big agenda. So maybe but what, what I might do between now and not the 30th, but the following meeting mm -hmm. is to try to, to look through these and maybe do a, a, an edit of some mm -hmm. for, uh, as a sort of rough draft to, to turn back to people. So any new ideas or things that you want to convey to me individually about changes that you're seeing or want to see, you know, if you get time between now and... We should really go back and look at it again. Right. And then I'll try to sort of fold those together into a document. Then we, we're, we're working on a edited thing instead of a raw from scratch wordsmithing. So I did have one more, mm -hmm. and I wonder if I could tell it to you now, and then Absolutely. you could decide if it fits as uh, section on page four, section five, one... G, <laughs> little no, little no, I, or I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not right. wedded to this outline, right, obviously, right. it's just what it is. Just say what section it, um, what it's about. It's the Community Intergovernmental Relations and Volunteer Committees, Boards and Commissions okay. section. So it talks about the relationships with UMass and Ham Amherst and Hampshire Colleges and has currently A through G under there. And G is currently reporting regularly on the UMass 2015 Strategic Partnership Agreement, SPA. And so I don't know if it fits under that or because this is going to be one of those things that is going to be a singular time and when it's done it'll be done and that thing is da, 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 is working with the schools on the discussion around the students and tax-free housing because when that was brought up as a surprise at town meeting to the select board that was unfortunate and we as a select board have not heard since, although I was surprised to see that referenced in an evaluation as something that's been reported out to us. It, it that really it have started somewhere. hasn't. And so um, it's something that, again, because of the whole town-wide impact, we're not trying to control it. We understand that it's a superintendent and town manager task to work with. But to be wise, you would need our input associated with that and to just have it sound like it's just happening off someplace without any discussion is therefore going to mean that the results are not going to be taken seriously by the community. So it should be explicit in the goals. Yeah. I th and, but it's a one-time thing because it's not something um, we hope, 
Well, <laughs> it might be a multi-year thing. I think but. you meant tax exempt, not tax free. Did I say that? Yes, tax exempt. Sorry. But I do. Th I think the way it would be in the goals initially would be one way. It may subsequently be in the goals right. differently over time as it evolves. Yeah, exactly. But I, I will take. No I've made note out. of that as Call well, and and so I'm. I'll put those things together. But if there are other things you think of as you look over these or, you know, wording changes, refinements you want, um, et cetera, please get them to me and then I will try to uh, craft them together in such a way that when we get together on September 11th, I guess would be September the September 11th, okay. Um, um, we could try to get a much, much closer to a set of goals that the manager would be. I mean, there's going to be some unsurprising changes like, you know, manage the budget. <laughs> you know, some of those kind of things are not really going to change. Um, but there are others that we might refine a bit. And we need to, just for your own opportunity to do them, get them to you sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else either of you wish to say about goals at this point? really minuscule but like I'm for a and then everything's under a I think the goals discussion should be its own line like B because I just kind of I want to make sure I remember that this is do you see oh yeah I'm and just I'm to make sure that that the goals really kind of jumps out or maybe you know it's sort of like ongoing like, continued discussion yeah 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 but like you really want us to do it Right, just on our own agenda. Yeah, yeah. call I'm, it out. So I'm a little surprised it didn't have a B next yeah. to it, to it be honest. Because it kind of, not give, excusing but, myself, but I almost, like, I really didn't notice it. I almost glossed over it myself. I was glad it was there because I, yes, I didn't want to have this conversation. It. But right. at the same but, time, I was like, oh, wait. Yeah, it oh, should wait, be its own item, separated right. from the evaluation. Uh, so we'll try to make sure to, really to get those things mm -hmm. um, together. So I believe... We're done with that. Oh. So we have, at this point, another bit of work to do, but it is, it is um, an executive session, um, correct? Do, do you want to have, um, just ask us if we have reports? Oh, time? yes. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yeah. is, do you want to ask us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. So you spoil from last week. So I am really kind of, you know, <laughs> to beat his on record. the fast track here, right? <laughs> just get us through the meeting. No. Uh, Actually, if there are uh, reports, both for the manager, mm -hmm. if he has some things he wants yes. to mention to us, or if either of you, so we'll start with member reports, we'll make the manager wait, because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the coin I flipped in my mind for that. So if either of you have something you want to, you want to go ahead to bring to the attention of uh, the... This, uh, just um, one thing was, um, in reference to our conversation that we're going to have on the 30th, and then again sometime later, about parking, um, I had told you that the downtown parking working group wasn't meeting um, in August and so was asking for part of that to be postponed here. Um, we did schedule a meeting for um, September 6th and again, I think it's the 13th, whatever, two weeks, those are, um, those are Wednesdays. And um, just to kind of give you a time frame, um, I'm just checking what, if I have that. Yeah, we're yeah we're switching from Tuesdays to Wednesdays, so that we'll be we have those two dates set, so we know we're going to be getting back to a couple things that were still outstanding. And I just wanted to mention today, um, both Miss Brew and myself were at the Sun Wheel at UMass to participate in a uh, the community the larger community had been been invited by the astronomy department at UMass to participate in the um, eclipse event and you know we don't always give the university credit for things they do that where they've opened up their facilities and they had a telescope there that people could use to view um, the sun and the moon so I just wanted to acknowledge there were I don't know I'm not good at this but there were probably 400 people there I don't know there were a lot there were a lot of, and it was really nice and all ages and a lot of community members and people from the campus so it was, very, it was lovely to have that opportunity to view it not you know just in a small you know in our yard but to go where other people were viewing this you know momentous event so i just wanted to mention that that's all i've got thank you so 
a question. Um, does that mean that are we still looking at making, we had originally said that we were going to be voting on things we chose to vote on at the August 28th meeting associated with parking, which then got moved to August 30th because we're not meeting the 28th. But are we still, in theory, looking at some of those things, but we may well say, oh, well, because downtown parking working groups meeting on the 6th, we're not ready to make a decision yet, but we are planning to have it still on the agenda for the 30th. Is that correct? Yes. Parking okay. will still be on the agenda. Uh, I think it will be in a much more scaled back version than was originally sort of part of the conversation. Yeah, I if you would. I think please. what we're envisioning, both speaking from the lap, from agenda setting and from conversation with the downtown parking working group is to have some motions ready for the 30th, where there okay. seemed to be um, kind of pretty much universal agreement, so those things could move forward, and where both the select board and or the parking working group had asked staff and others for more information, those would be on hold until a future date. I'm not sure that was still the plan. <laughs> Thank you. I think I you had missed that. some of that from when you Yes, the, the, the day that I was gone on the 14th. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of an update, so thank you. And the other thing I just wanted to mention beyond, I guess two things. One is associated with the marijuana working group. Despite the fact that people are allowed to actually have vacations, including myself and some staff, things continue to unfold with that situation, obviously. And so KP Law recently sent us some sample language, which we didn't have when we originally wrote you know, the notice for the planning board meeting, hearing, et cetera. And so I wanted to just mention that everyone is working really hard on this in addition to all the other things they were already doing. It's not like anything else has gone away and suddenly they've got a whole other set of things to do. So I wanted to acknowledge again that a lot of staff is putting time into this, myself and Ms. Kruger, and we are doing our best to get all the possible options ready for town meeting for the fall because those deadlines are coming up before we know it. And in terms of planning board hearings for zoning issues, those are, you know, they have to get those in the pipeline too. There may be things that we decide as we get closer, they may still stay on the warrant, but we may decide we don't need them for whatever reason because of the different information we keep getting as to how to interpret things. But I've been pushing hard that we include all possible things that we know about right now, because we can always say we don't actually need that. But if we decide later we did need it, then it gets really hard to work in a special amongst the special and all that kind of jazz in terms of trying to get our timing right before spring. So a lot of people putting in a lot of effort and still we'll be seeing stuff coming through and there will end up being a legal notice for a planning board hearing. 13th, 16th, somewhere around that middle of September. And so people start to see that and maybe as they're coming back from vacation start to be paying attention to that. But we don't yet have a, a presentation ready, you know, a new presentation as opposed to the wonderful updates we've been getting um, for the select board, but that's all being worked on. And so that, there's a lot going on there. And the other one I wanted to mention is associated with our alcohol policies which is that I had said, yes, I would be happy to work on that, but I want some more detail about how we got to this thing that we already got presented. And for one reason or another, we have not been able to yet gather that information together. And just as a little side note, it so happens, as some people know, that the treasurer had an alcohol task force, which had several hearings, and there was one in Northampton. I went and testified, and through um, my wonderful affiliation with MMA through MSA through Hampshire County Select Boards Association, or who knows whose names dropped um, on the survey monkey that I filled out, I got appointed to one of the working groups that's working with the task force. It's been an interesting experience so far, having been through one of those meetings um, by phone, since I was not about to drive to Boston with no right foot. And so, um, I wasn't really, I was wondering how that was going to impact, you know, our, what we were writing, and I'm learning some stuff that we may want to include in our thing, but the particular working group I ended up on was not my ideal working group, because they did that for various reasons, and so I'm still finding out how we can effectively influence the task force as they start making decisions associated with this, and obviously the industry has a lot of, um, ideas about how to do What's things differently. What's the title? It's called licensing process. Turns out all the things I actually 
care about are in economic development. Oh. Um, but of course, they didn't tell us that when they gave us the titles and we had to pick first and second choices and they decided they didn't want all the public health people on the public health group because they wanted to spread them out. They wanted to spread out the industry people and trust me, there's a lot of industry people to spread out. <laughs> so, um, That's surprising. It's, it's been, I mean, it's great. It's great. And it's great that the state is, is trying this model. It's a little different than what I'd quite predicted, but um, there are going to be four more meetings of my working group. All the working groups are going to have four to six meetings before the end of September. Um, it's all very um, confidential based. So there have been hundreds of pages of testimony submitted to the task force, which they are not releasing even to members of the working group. So it's an interesting process, and I will keep you updated as I learn things that I'm allowed to talk about. But um, thus far, it was really just figuring out what, what is our set of questions versus another group's set of questions, and then how to influence each other's sets of questions. So it's a process thing at this point. But it's been interesting, and I will tell you more when I have more that I can feed back to them. Okay. Great. Mr. Slaughter. Yes. I'm just. Um, I don't want to prolong this too much, but just on the recreational marijuana um, internal working group we've had, um, in, we had talked also at agenda setting uh, recently about the uh, idea of having, <clears throat> soon having a presentation to the select board prior to actually discussing uh, draft warrant articles, but the four or five articles that we would be probably looking at, and there was some conversation from coming, uh, I, I, at least I understood from staff from the zoning subcommittee and the planning board, wanting to know if the select board was thinking about intending to um, look at limiting the number of retail establishments and um, there were some people in the community who said, well, you know, we've never had a community conversation about that. And, it, you know, it's sort of a chicken and egg before the planning board uh, knows all of what they're doing. They're looking to us, are we thinking of limiting and what would be that number? And then the community is saying, we want a chance to weigh in because we've never really had that, and if we wait all the way till when we're reviewing Warren articles, it, it doesn't have that kind of spirit of hearing what you know what people are thinking or wanting, and in, in us to start tossing around where we're going. We just wait for the, you know, even if it is zoning, it's not just a zoning decision. So, some way to kind of front load some of uh, one of our meetings where we we devote some time to getting updated about the actions we will be taking before we even uh, take positions on Warren articles. So I can't remember, because I know you missed one of the marijuana meetings, if you were, you know, if you were privy to that or not. No, and um, because those meetings aren't required to follow up in meeting law, and so we don't have copious minutes associated with them. And but I, I could have updated you. And, <laughs> um, but you just did, so that's cool. But one of the things that perhaps would be useful for us to do when we meet, is it next week? We had to cancel this week's meeting because, but we're doing the because too many people are away. Yeah. So yeah. is to come up with a list again of where we're at because things that are, while it's true it's all tied together, the number of outlets, which is a specific question we need to, we could ask, is not a zoning question, I don't think. And that's what we have to sort out, because we do have to get the timing right in terms of when's, when's a hearing that might be partially talking about that, when will we take positions on warrant articles, and where's that middle space where we can have the conversation we're talking and about. I'm not gonna try to answer it now, but it does um, reflect back on some of the zoning-related questions that have come up, and, we, and there, are, there are notes from Meaning so I think we'll pick up that thread again next week. Next week so um, 
So it's it's new and exciting <laughs> and ever evolving and right. trying to figure that out and carving out some time where we like have actual things, not just so. What do you think we ought to do? About right. <laughs> we have some well, actual things people that, can talk about. Are we going to limit and what? How would we do right. that? And what's the right number? That's not just our, you know, our own cerebral decision. Right, and it's something we may need to draft internally before we actually have the chance to discuss it as a group, but the clock is ticking on us as we go along on that. Okay, enough said by me. So any other things to mention? All right. You're, did you have a report? I do not, I've, my committees have been fairly but quiet. Can I ask you about this yeah. then? What's that, I'm sorry? Housing. So, oh, right, oh, thank you for reminding me. That's, that's, it's like the one big thing, it's a giant <laughs> document in the middle of the packet. So in our packet, you will find, I'm sorry, thank you for mentioning that, because it's like, Sorry, you know, I, didn't, I didn't code the softball correctly before. That's quite all right. Um, <laughs> what you'll find from the uh, Affordable Housing Trust, the Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust, is their uh, strategic plan. Uh, we worked with a uh, consultant, Jen Golson, to uh, get this put together and, and have been kind of crafting it for a while, um, actually began before I even joined the, the trust. And so, um, but it does articulate sort of the first steps that uh, they're going to, to look to execute and, and um, you know, the direction they're gonna take in the, in the first few years. And I think it also, what's nice about this is it does, you know, one of the changes we made at Springtown meeting was to alter the, the number and, and in some ways a little bit of the focus of the Affordable Housing Trust because we subsumed the, the Housing and Sheltering Committee and so there are aspects of sheltering that are now in this strategic plan as well and so that uh, I think it's reflected there and uh, so it, it uh, you know, it's available on the website and people should take a chance, you know, if they get an opportunity to take a, a look through it, um, they should and, and it's not terribly long as these kinds of things go. Um, but it is, uh, I think it'll really help the 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 trust uh, get moving forward on some some actionable steps that they've been wanting to do for a while and various pieces and now we've got a kind of structure about how to how to move ahead and in, in a way that's um, you know functional I guess is the best way to describe it so that next steps are are sort of teed up and ready to go and uh, as a plan of plan of attack as well nine members now right. And we, so it's good timing because they right. No, exactly. We 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 now have just added the 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 extra members to it. We we had a, a nice uh, group of folks that we interviewed for the purposes of of uh, sort of filling in the trust and and so we've we've um, we've got our membership up in in uh, a good place and so we're we're ready to start uh, taking on some work and I think that uh, the current chair's plan is to include. It, include you know the community members as well and some of the subcommittees that that we're thinking of forming and doing so you know in as much as people may not explicitly be on the trust there are people that are interested in in serving and may be asked to to help us out as far as um, moving some of the goals ahead and and doing some of the legwork that's necessary this is a, a lot of you know large and complex components to some of the work that you know the trust can do and wants to do and so having more people apply some some effort to it is helpful in getting it done in a timely way. And so associated with that, when, when John Hornick, the chair, point, points out, well, you know, welcoming the opportunity to discuss the plan, et cetera. So rather than necessarily having that conversation, my personal interest as a select board member would be in ensuring that there's um, frequent communication associated with some of the bullet points and examples that he's provided in terms of, for example, the social services funding. So I know you guys are working on planning out that conversation of all the different kinds of community services funding we already do, no matter what we call it, right. and, and how it functions in that, and to make sure that they're aware of when we're having those conversations so they can see what we're already doing and how this idea might fit in with that so that they're prepared to do that. because. Obviously, we have a lot on our plate for September, but but to make sure that they're part of that conversation rather than just depending on them to notice or through you, right. but to like somehow, this this is a good example I think of officially of we have to figure out a way as you guys sort out how we're doing that particular thing, to let all the committees and boards know that we're going to be doing 
that event and so that they have some opportunity to prepare for it as a committee. Right. right. And one other note, they, the Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust will be meeting this Thursday evening, I believe, mm -hmm. is the next scheduled meeting. So, uh, yes. I, I was a little, um, <clears throat> I, I like John, John, Mr. Hornick's letter, but when he says it would be useful to discuss the relationship between the select board and the trust, well, I, I mean, I think we know what the relationship is, um, maybe to discuss, you know, uh, channels of communication or what Ms. Brewer was just talking about. I mean, I think the relationship is, the structure of that is known. Right. I think that's probably what his intent was there as well, but I'll... You can ask him. I can ask him about it, absolutely I will. <laughs> There's some confusion about that. So I think that was the, I'm trying to think if there was anything else now we haven't had this conversation in a while. Um, I think that's it. For PBTA? <laughs> um, <laughs> that reminds me. Yes. I do. No, he knows you. so much about well, PBTA. The is, I know, figured I there's to, something that's an know, update. I go to 9,000 meetings and then I have like a week off and suddenly I forget like everything that happened. Pre from your brain. Yeah, anything that happened previous to that week off was it. gone now. Uh, actually, we received... At least I received an email, I want to say, yesterday, no, Friday, because yesterday was Sunday, and I know they didn't send me an email on Sunday. Uh, on Friday of the, of the, the uh, you know, the voted changes that are going to occur, and, and there's a sort of laundry list of, of what's specifically taking shape in our town. Not that it's changed since the last time we discussed all of them, but I think they sort of put them in a formal thing. I'm, I need to uh, convey that to... Uh, the manager and get that posted on our website for you know sort of public awareness of, of what those changes are um, to the service uh, most of the ones for us will take effect basically after the Labor Day weekend because that's when UMass is back in session so the effective change date is really the 4th of September 5th of mm -hmm. September um, for the changes for us some of the ones that are happening in Springfield in that area happen about a week earlier um, and uh, but thank you for that reminder we have a meeting uh, Wednesday of this week where we'll probably go over that all again one more time um, and review anything else that's changed with regard to sort of budget projections and that sort of thing relative to, to those cuts and whether or not we're actually making up the gap that we needed to make up or not. We'll I'll have more news on that at next our next meeting um, on the 30th. Um, but that's, that is the the sort of latest news of the of the PETA, um, but the let's see the MPO is meeting tomorrow to uh, make some small tweaks to uh, their budget for the coming year and you know so anytime they the way they work is they have a a, a five year plan that they're a capital plan that they're working on and then they have the the current year that they're in. And in either circumstance, if they make changes to it, they have to put it out for public comment for a period of time. I want to say we've shortened it to 21 days. But um, so we met last month to put things out for public comment. And now this, we can take action on it this, this week on Tuesday. So we'll probably take action on those changes. And um, most of those kind of changes are in con you know, not terribly controversial in some respects, the, you know, changes in costs and, and uh, you know, the either uh, you know, if, if things go up, then we have to move money around to sort of make sure to cover the project and let it get, you know, make sure it gets finished. And likewise, if, if a project comes in under budget, then that frees up money that's available for other projects and can be applied perhaps sooner or start a project sooner as a result and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, I think it's sort of the typical mid-year type of changes are happening with regard to the, uh, the MPO, which is the Municipal Planning Organization, relative to, essentially relative to, you know, Money's available from MassDOT and the federal government, et cetera, for uh, roads and bridges and railway infrastructure, particularly related to transportation. Um, so again, no more next week after the meeting tomorrow. Um, the AGCOM hasn't met. I'm trying to think if there's any other. What I should do is look at the back of our sheet and see what things are the liaison for. Strikes any real letters. Um, no real news from this Amherst Center Recreation Working Group. We've we've 
offered suggestions to to staff regarding some uh, sample companies that might uh, there was some money granted for uh, a master planning process. Um, we had at our last meeting sort of gone through and seen a few of samples of work from from some of those uh, companies that are inter in, potentially would be uh, able to do that kind of master planning work for us. Um, and then we sort of put our votes in as to who we liked of the ones that we had. Uh, but we haven't met again to sort of take any action on on where that's going. Um, Glancing through the list here, anything else? I don't think so. So I think that's largely it for me. Um, but thank you for the reminders, because again, it's been a month since some of the things have met, and, and uh, also out of practice, been sort of buried in an evaluation mostly over the last couple of weeks. So yes, <laughs> if we're not talking strange about that, I don't know if it exists. Yeah. It doesn't exist it's, if it it's isn't a strange that. Time of year. So thank you. Um, so I think if there aren't others from other things from you guys or questions for me around those topics, then we'll let the manager. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Jason, Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I don't, I'm not sure what uh, Mr. Zomak reported on last week, but I'll just go through, and if he's, he's already covered it, you can say something. So in the, in the spirit of thanking the university for things nicely done, I did send a letter to the chancellor thanking him for the work that they did on uh, 4th of July, Independence Day. Uh, they mm -hmm. devote a lot of resources to have, making sure that that's a community-wide event, that um, with their police, their public works, the planning, uh, they, the use of the facility, um, so they do a really tremendous job. And I, when I was just seeing how much they put into it and how much our LSSC staff works with them, how closely they work, um, I was really appreciative of that. And so I want him to know that explicitly. Um, uh, Coffee with the town manager, their next event will be this Friday, August 25th. Uh, I'll be with Fire Chief Nelson at Kelly's Restaurant. So if you want to come, we're expanding our hours because I think Kelly's sometimes uh, attracts an earlier crew, so we're starting at 7. We'll be there from 7 till 9. Um, we did a, a couple of team building things this uh, August. It's a good time for us to uh, group uh, together with the school department. It's a brainchild of the uh, interim superintendent. We had a uh, school staff and um, town staff get together um, for pizza and sort of some games, but mostly um, try to force everybody to sit with somebody they didn't know from the other side and and had conversations and people had people introduce each other just uh, to sort of build that camaraderie between that we're one community even though we may work for the schools or we may work for the town and that I think that uh, is pretty low-key but I think it was pretty successful and thank the superintendent for thinking of that idea and helping to push it forward um, likewise I've held a, a department heads uh, invited them to an after work event at my house and so we, just to have people come together and sort of talk about anything but work um, and so that was a that was a nice little event too and I appreciate all the people coming after work to um, participate in that um, this year the, this is the time of year when we start to prepare for the students to come back and so the police uh, have been working with the university in preparation for um, all the normal things that they anticipate um, and trying to be um, aggressive and, and pr proactive in communicating with students, especially freshmen when they come in and letting them know, you know, how, it, how things work, what the ground rules are, educating them about things. Um, I know the CCC has worked a lot on this issue and we had some conversations about their efforts too. Um, one of the things that they're paying special attention to with all three of our institutional partners are uh, when students come back anticipating um, potential activity that may stem from the recent protests and counter protests that have been happening throughout the country, um, being in communication with the public safety officials in, on the ca campuses, what kind of support can we provide, what do they expect, what, what do we expect them to do. So they're having those conversations now, which I think is a very, um, that's just good management and paying attention to things. Um, on the fire side, uh, we are three uh, new firefighters are working out really, really well. We appreciate their coming to the town, each coming from a different perspective. One uh, is in the, the academy and about to finish up. The other two have gone through the required training, so they're actively involved as being firefighter paramedics. 
later in the year, they will both go to the academy. Um, so, you know, paying attention, we're putting a lot of investment into these three individuals to become valued members of the fire force. So that's that'll be that's really good. Um, we're paying special attention to the payroll for the fire department. Um, there's been a lot of changes. Uh, the, um, there's a there's been some injuries, so it's a, something we're hyper alert to, even though we're only a couple months into the fiscal year. It's something the chief will have to be paying attention to so we don't go over budget. Um, the student force members arrive on Sunday and they go undergo an, uh, an intensive week of training. Uh, there are 32 student firefighters who have signed up, which is what we want. That's exactly the right number. Um, 10 are new, which is really a good recruiting year. Uh, that And six will actually live in the North Amherst Fire Station, which is the goal. And those are all the senior leaders of it. So that's that's coming working out. And then on the fire side, they're also ramping up uh, for the um, return of the students that we will be staffed up on the first weekend when they return because it's a long, they come in on September 1st, but their classes don't start until the 4th. Uh, we're anticipating a fair amount of activity, especially with freshmen being there early. Um, so we're prepared for that. And then, of course, we continue with the um, additional staffing that UMass provides uh, in, through their funding. Uh, on the DPW front, front the roundabout um, project is going really well still. You know, it goes fast and then it seems to slow down. Uh, Verizon finally is down there. They're taking a lot of time to remove their poles. They have to switch everyone over, but they're, they're actively working on it, so that is um, good. We have three sets of crews um, working in the same area, so that it's it's wise for us to keep the, the intersection closed so that they can work as quickly as possible. Uh, and even with that, they're sometimes stumbling over each other. They all seem to want to work in the same spot at the same time. Um, and because we have our crews putting up uh, street lights, we have the Verizon crew changing over, and then we have the uh, Warner Brothers, who are still doing the sidewalks and structures and things like that, they anticipate pay, they don't anticipate paving until August 31st, which is our deadline. But it's at the tail end of the deadline. So, but they believe they will be able to pave on the final coat. It's already been paved twice. The final coat on August 31st, which is a week from Thursday. Um, students are scheduled to come back the next day. Um, we've already anticipated that. Um, the, the um, issues with the intersection because our schools, the Amherst schools, open on the on Wednesday. So we will be making accommodations and working with the bus coordinator at the schools to make sure buses can get through the intersection or open it or be, keep it open early in the morning and then close it after the school starts. Um, so that's that's being contemplated as well. Uh, you also see if you travel North Pleasant Street, they um, that were paving today. They have two more days of paving. Uh, and then they'll be off of North Pleasant Street. Um, and then they, the only thing that'll be left will be, be the painting of North Pleasant Street. Um, and that is moving along. Um, that will be followed up by paving East Pleasant Street, uh, which won't happen until um, uh, September at some point. That will probably be, probably be the last major paving project for the town this, this year. Uh, UMass the, is working on the crosswalks that you gave them permission to install a few weeks ago. So they're hoping to get that completed prior to um, school opening. And then as you see, the work in Amherst Woods uh, continues with, that's a- And continues. And, and continues. continues, it's a major project. I, was, I just received sort of the, the history lesson of how, why sewer wasn't put in there, why, you know, things like that. So it's kind of an interesting, why we're paying for it now. Um, we had talked about College Street being paved, um, but that's not going to happen this calendar year. It'll be put off till the spring, and that's that's actually a good contractors. Um, every single contractor is being absorbed by the state working on 91. There are major construction projects in Springfield, in Northampton, and in Greenfield. Uh, we know people, you know, who are saying they they work for one company and they're being farmed out to subcontract for other companies because everything's all the resources. And I think that's part of the reason where we, you know, our paving is gonna to happen to August 31 because the state is really absorbing a lot of that. Um, let's see. The, um, as we talked about, I think you are aware, we talked maybe a little bit about this, this um, 
building inspector, the building commissioner have, went to the bid forum, and that was really well. And then we went the next day, I think after our select board meeting, we went to the Chamber of Commerce meeting, and then pretty much the same kind of thing. There's some overlap, so there wasn't anything new for a lot of folks. But again, uh, it, they had bigger things on their minds for that meeting because they were dealing with the vacancy. And so we sort of got in and got out and did our thing. They're, but they're appreciative of it. Mr. Bachman, yes. For the viewers about signs. Yes. You, you didn't say what it was. Oh, uh, oh, the the new the uh, okay. So signs, shorthand for us, we all know it, but the people who are watching may not. So the building commissioner is looking at um, beginning to address the issue of signs. Uh, the way he presents it is that this is not a health and safety issue. They've pretty much organized themselves on those things already. So now they have the capacity to take on the proliferation of signs, starting with the sort of signs that you put see in the public way that might say. And there sometimes are signs, LSSC signs, looking for football tryouts or whatever, um, letting people know that we're going to keep those out of the public way. And uh, so you can have them still on your own private property, but they can't be in the public way. And then looking at the most egregious examples and educating business owners about covering of windows, signage that isn't appropriate or permitted. Um, and. Uh, I think he described a little bit about what he was doing when he was here about the, the sort of approach, the sort of gradual approach where we start to ratchet down and then revisit things. And also at the same time, we're re looking at the sign bylaws, which are both general bylaws and zoning bylaws um, to see what can be changed, unlikely for the fall town meeting, but most likely for the spring town meeting. So that um, there's just, you know, our signs are, um, it, it, you want to bring regularity so that everybody's treated fairly, and that's where we're trying to get to. And it seems like sometimes that's not really happening. So the building commissioner is really intent on trying to get that. And I think this is really, you know, as you mentioned at the bid forum, Ms. Kruger, that it has been a, a select board initiative to make this happen and to say we need this paid attention to, and that's why he's doing that. Um, Mr. Slaughter mentioned the peg contract. That's we're meeting again on the 24th. That makes, we're making really good progress on that. I think um, we're starting to agree on ma major issues and we still have a lot of language things we need to talk about, but um, I'm very hopeful that we won't need another extension before between, beyond September 30th uh, to make forward progress on that. Uh, importantly, Beacon Communities did not receive an award of tax credits from the, from the state. Um, they are examining their options. Um, when I spoke with the with Jay Ash, the secretary, he basically said it's not unusual not to be funded your first time. In fact, it's, unu it's unusual to be funded the first try. Um, Beacon is very practiced at this. They have a very high quality, they're a high quality developer with a high quality project. Uh, they have a supportive town that has invested funds in it. It's, it's the type of, it's in the location that the town has designated some, this, pro this type of project to happen. And it's addressing an affordable housing need that we have designated, which is housing that for, with deep affordability. So it has a lot of things going for it. Um, and, but we are, they are examining and we'll be communicating with, um, with the state to say, how can we make this better? We are intent on uh, seeking this, going back at it again, because I think it's, it's, the town has already in the select board and the community has already said in many ways, this is a quality project that should happen and this is the right place for it. Um, so that will, I'll keep you updated on where that goes. I have not had a, I have not had a conversation with Beacon, but David, ha, David Mr. Zomak has, and so um, they're examining their options right now. Um, Mr. Buckman, yeah. if I could just add, sure. people might not know, when you say it's not uncommon for um, a developer to have to apply a second or a third time for tax credits, the reason is not always a deficiency in the proposal, but rather a lack of resources. Mm -hmm. So we have more applicants for low-income housing tax credits. They're a federal resource that each state, in this case the state, is com giving out competitively. So if people are queued up, um, for asks and there's not enough resource, then that that's why it kind of cascades down to a second and third. So it doesn't, I mean, it, it, it's not just there's something wrong with that project, but they're queuing up waiting for enough right. resource. Right, that's good, thank you. Um, 
The DPW Fire Station Advisory Committee met last week. I don't have an update on what they uh, are looking for. They've established the land parameters. Um, when I talked to the chair before I went on vacation, she was more intent on thinking we're not interested in asking for funds at the fall town meeting. She felt there was some education that needed. I'm not sure what happened if that what transpired at the committee meeting. So um, that, that was her speaking individually. Whether the committee agrees with that, I'm not sure. But I'll keep you updated once we know more about that. Um, we'll be bringing a, a, a more a fairly formal proposal. Um, presentation to you about the health insurance trust because that's a major issue for the town um, and uh, the comptroller and I will be working along with the, pe the people who manage the trust to um, make a, a formal presentation to you so you can see exactly what is happening with that um, speaking earlier about if, the, if okay, I may just sure. when, when do you anticipate that um, I think we might have did I put do we put it on We penciled that in for September 11th. So we'll talk about that agenda setting if that's mm -hmm. appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Ms. Brewer brought up about the Charter Commission. I've been asked to uh, do a comparative analysis of the costs of town meeting versus a cost of a council form of government. Um, so we'll pull something together on that um, best we can. How do Look, you do that? <laughs> I just, I can only look at our staff resources that we devote and what we can anticipate. Um, I, it'll be a guesstimate and people can pick at it and but we'll try to be transparent so people say well that's not really accurate i mean we do know i look at town meeting we know, do know what staff resources it takes to attend a certain number of t these meetings we do know staff resources uh, just packets just have to try to look at that um I think I'm not sure if I reported this on that I attended the Council on Aging Long Range Planning Committee meeting on July 31st, and that was a real focused meeting on the need for a new senior center, which I'm sure you have heard before. But um, it was good for me to hear the full presentation that they have and the strength of their appeal. Um, you know, I made it very clear that um, there are a lot of other priorities in the community, um, and this is an important one, but also looked at are there other ways to address it can you we work with another community to um to address it so um but it was good they were appreciative of the conversation and i think they they have um this is a fairly it looked like a, pro, a updated presentation from several years ago um i'm happy to report that i've renewed the contracts with both the police chief and fire chief for three years where i feel like we're very lucky to have two dedicated experienced professionals leading our public safety efforts and i want to thank them for uh, going through the negotiations um, pretty standard um, uh, cost of living increases for for them um, and um, so uh, I'll get more details on that. They signed them while, while I was away on vacation, actually. They had it in front of them. Um, we have been looking for the, if you recall, the town meeting approved, and you did too, the shared procurement officer position. So we've interviewed people. We have some really excellent candidates for that. And that's, um, so we'll be making that decision very soon. Um, and uh, very, really superior candidates. and. Um, and what's you know, a side note to this is that sometimes you get a really good candidate who's not qualified for the job, but you say, wow, this person would be great if we have another opening for something else. They're not quite at the level we need, but you get, you alert, you get alerted. And also internal candidates, it's really good for internal candidates who say, I'm interested in this. You see the ambition that's being generated. So going through this process, I think, has been really, uh, it energizes people in some way. It also opens our eyes to what, what the possibilities are. And uh, I think, as you said, that the people do want to work for the town of Amherst. It's really it's uh, an exciting place to be. Um, I appreciate Mr. Slaughter um, coming to Ms. Uh, Linda Chalfont's uh, retirement, and uh, that was a really well attended event. And thanks to the folks who organized that. She was Linda had some really genuinely warm, wonderful things to say about her her experience in working with the town. Uh, she, she's a very generous, warm person. You can you just see that, and um, it was it was a really really sweet event. And um, she had a lot of family there, um, and it, it was a it was a it was a hard day. I think it was a Friday before 
it was, I forget what the day it was, but it was a Friday and it was, but, it was, but people really made the effort to be there. And a lot of people spoke with it. <laughs> some people not even expecting to, <laughs> so they wanted to. Um, and another note along those same lines is Jonathan Tucker's last day was last week. Um, he's made an enormous contribution to the town with incredible knowledge. Um, he's de really dedicated his professional career to the town. Um, we, there will be a farewell event f held for him later after Labor Day. I mean, just I think everybody's sort of, there's, as we know, there's just a lot of people on vacation at this time of year. Um, uh, hold on. So, oh, and then um, I think we all, I sent out earlier, uh, Congressman McGovern will be on August 23rd at 9.30, we'll be at Simple Guest Farm on 1089 North Pleasant Street. So if anybody can attend that, I think um, Ms. Brewer had a good idea that it was a valuable thing to do, to attend when, if he's making the effort to come here. And because um, when you look at the schedule, he's going to like 12 places that day. We're at the beginning of the schedule. That means we're, we're likely to be on time for that. So <laughs> hoping folks will be there. Um, and uh, on August 29th at 7.30 is the UMass Community Breakfast. Uh, later that day is the first day celebration on the Common. Uh, August 30th is the International Student Reception at 4 p.m. Um, so those are all the things. Uh, at your next meeting, the 30th, we'll talk about this agenda setting, but it looks like we're sort of lining up a lot of sort of parking things like um, Fisher Street resident request, the Olympia Place parking, uh, downtown parking group. Uh, there's a mo poll hearings for putting these mobile light antennas on some of the poles. So it'll be a, that's gonna be that kind of night with that type of thing on the agenda. And I think that concludes my report. If you have questions, I'm available. Um, you talked about um, people really wanting to come and work for the town of Amherst. Mm -hmm. And if I'm right, I think tomorrow is your one year anniversary. It is. Yes, <laughs> which I'm very so, pleased to be here. <laughs> so, congratulations, you may survive, <laughs> survive the year, the year in, in, in grace and good humor. So, yes. did it go back by fast or slow? Um, <laughs> it seems it doesn't seem like a year, but it's but so much has transpired. It's really remarkable. Um, that's I mean, I appreciate the opportunity. It's really. I mean, we I talked a lot about this on vacation. That's changed my life. It changed my family's life. So, and so it, it's been really positive experience all around. And um, so I went. And also, you're a good board. I mean, you work well together. Um, you're experienced. You know the town, and that helps so much to have a functioning board. I know a lot of managers, my colleagues, who get in where the the board is dysfunctional, and it makes their life. They get positioned between people. It becomes really difficult. This is. You had you have strong leadership um, for the town, and um, and without that direction, I think my time here would have been much, I would have struggled a lot more. But you've laid out a lot of give me a lot of the background on what the where the you know problems are and stuff. So that's that's always that that's worked really well. You know, I always say it's the staff. You know, and that's that's they're they're clearly um, great to work with, but. It's just for me. It just hit it. I just honestly, it just hit at the right time in my life. It's it's hitting on all the notes that I feel ca that I care about. It's a community I care about. It's it, the community is addressing issues I care about. So it's just, uh, I just really appreciate the opportunity. Yes. Would have been such a nice segue into our executive session, <laughs> except, <laughs> except we got something I have a else. Question. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. But. Um, so associated with the one of my favorite topics, clearly, the signage issue with the building commissioner. So one of the press reports indicated that he was going to be looking for a letter from the select board to share with business owners. That wasn't exactly how I remembered the conversation, but that was a press report that was given out. And so what I'm not necessarily quoting, mm -hmm. <laughs> our friends in the press, but what I'm trying to get at is a couple of things. 
when one of the articles also mentioned that you know, if you don't have a permit, then you can't have a sign in these various places in the public way, for example. Mm-hmm. No one has had a permit for over 10 years. It isn't like there's a question as to whether or not this group has a permit or that one doesn't. No one has had a permit for over 10 years. That's a different thing. Oh, okay. We're talking about in the public way, yep. not the not the advertisements in a public way that are like on the sidewalk that are sandwich boards that are certain people are allowed to have because they don't have the kind of frontage that other people have. So we're talking about the LSSC signs. We keep picking on the football program, which is an awesome program, but the football signs aren't supposed to be in certain places, just like the Big Brothers Big Sisters craft fair signs aren't supposed to be in certain places. So no one has had that permit for over 10 years. So it's not like that's really a concept except something that needs to be changed. And as you indicated, you know, we thought we flirted for a minute about doing it this spring. We realized it was tied to too many other things. It'll probably happen next spring. But I just want to make it clear that it's not that some people get them and some people don't. It's that we don't do it. And that's just how it is. Um, and, and it sounds like we probably don't want to either, and so we will need to formalize that. My other concern is along the lines of, I appreciate that he's gone and talked to the bid and the chamber, and I appreciate that you are our employee and he's mm-hmm. not. I'm still really uneasy about the way it's been described both at the select board and in the press about you know, we're going to talk about, you know, maybe bringing it back a little bit, or we're going to talk about doing a little bit of this or doing a little bit of that. I'm not, I'm having a hard time understanding why there isn't more of a laid out proposal that we could understand, because this is a big thing that a lot of us have been talking about for a long time. It isn't just one of the thousands of things that staff do on a day-to-day basis, because we don't get engaged in that, and rightfully so, because they're the experts, and he's still the expert on this, too. But as he himself has described to us, you know, you don't go into a community and suddenly just change things, right? And we have had missteps associated with new inspection officers with various things, because there's the way we do it, there's the way the books say to do it, and there's the way that person does it. And I'm concerned, I remain concerned that we haven't seen a plan of how this works beyond we're going to talk to people and we're going to do it. Because what I've been asking for all along is that people be at the table to discuss this, that they they aren't told we're going to start doing this, so you better get in line. It's that what is a reasonable amount? Our bylaw says this. We're not going to change the bylaw right now. We're going to talk about enforcement right now. I'm not going to come and start writing everybody tickets, the effectiveness of tickets. But what would be the right thing? And I would want the business owners to be part of that conversation. What I guess I'm trying to make is, I'm trying to not say this at every single meeting, because I feel like I've now said it numerous times. But I'm also getting to the point where I'm getting ready to wash my hands of it and say, whatever he does at this point, I don't want it to come back on the select board as it was our idea. If we don't get more buy into the process, either it's a cooperative thing or it's his thing on his own with you, in which case I'm not going to go around defending to business owners why we're doing what we're doing. And so I like being in the position that we are traditionally in of all working on the same team. And I'm not really feeling it on this particular issue. So I just like us to be thoughtful about that. Mm-hmm. and so that we don't end up in a position with any of these issues like we did with a previous town manager, but with the same, the rest of the process that involved coming down on a particular business for not doing a particular thing we all knew they weren't doing. And so I don't want that to happen Mm -hmm. with anyone in here. And so I understand that there's a line in there someplace as to we're not in people's day-to-day workplace but at the same time, this is a big enough issue that I feel like we have fought so hard to overcome the Amherst is not picky for the sake of being picky. We aren't difficult to work with because we like making people's lives miserable. It's because we think, like you say, we've dealt with the health and safety things. We think we're doing the right thing. Quality of life. Mm-hmm. It's quality of life, mm-hmm. right. And it's not to punish anybody. It's to say, come on, we have to work together to make this better. What? So I think if you heard his presentation to the business community, you would have understood. He would have. It was more de- detailed. He had worked on it more since he presented to you. He pre- presented to you, Good. based on your feedback. He understood it had to be more detailed to test for the business community. Um, he doesn't say this is a select board initiative um, that was volunteered. 
uh, that so was volunteered. Um, and, what and made you, someone asked Mr. Moore, what made you decide to take this up now? And he, he yeah. didn't point the finger, and I was like, yeah. because we asked him to. But, but he does, there is a plan, and I think, I thought I sent the, the PowerPoint to you, but maybe I didn't. I should, I, if, I, if I didn't, I apologize, because it has more detail in it in terms of what he's presenting to the public, which includes going out initially having a general meeting with the business community that everybody will be invited to and say, here's what we're talking about, going out one-to-one, -one, having conversations. So it becomes a, a conversation um, for the first few months. That's what the way it, and then um, come October, there isn't like, now we start enforcing, it's more um, coming back here and saying, here's where we are, here's what we've discovered. Here's here's how we're looking at things, and that's we looked at October sort of a check-in time mm -hmm. for that, and that's that's on his. Mm -hmm. little, I'll send I'll send the um, okay. the PowerPoint because that's on his chart that he gives out to people because he knows he knows that he can't sit, come in except for the signs in the public way. That's one where he says that's cut and dried. You know, it's, right. it's pretty easy. Everything else, you know, he doesn't know if ten percent. And there's lots of questions on how you measure. B business owners had questions. Mm -hmm. If you were looking at my subway shop, are you looking at just the windows? How are you, do you go up to the, the roof line? How far do you count 10% of what? And he has his interpretation of that, but he says, I'm open to listening to businesses tell me I should interpret it a different way. Because it is something that he wants to make work, but sort of what you've been saying is to reel it in a little bit. You know, there, he's like the sort of wagging you know, sign that's those, inflatable things yes. you know, those ban <laughs> and the that's banner clearly thing, beyond yeah. and he says we we have taken down many of those that's you know they've mm -hmm. already been active he they have not when they've seen something in the day-to-day -day travels they sometimes will address it if it's especially egregious what he's saying is they want to have a little more thoughtful approach with all the inspectors on the same page so everybody's addressing it the same way and they have a proactive outreach to the individual businesses to say here's what we're looking at here's we're if we were to look at it exactly the way the bylaw says, this is what you'd have to do, what's reasonable from your point of view type of thing. So there, there is, it helpful. is an iterative process. So um, I'll send out that That's PowerPoint helpful. to you. And knowing that we'll, we'll receive some sort of check-in in October. In October that yeah, would be yeah really that gives me comfort. Yeah. Because, be, and also from the standpoint that I just didn't want to make it seem like we said by golly, this is what we want you no, to do. And then it's like, wait, 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 that's not you can't exactly just, You can't just do that, understood, yeah. <laughs> we didn't mean to have it turn right. out that way. Okay. And, and he, he's not even prepared to the sandwich boards in town that, uh, you know, every new business that starts does get permitted according to the existing bylaw. Right. So that he can attest to, because that's, he follows that, they're pretty judicious about that. Um, but there's a lot of other things out there and sort of, taking on what you can manage is what his, his mantra is. Okay. Other questions for the managers regarding things he brought up? Okay. So now, I think we're ready to go into, uh, given that we've sort of formally adopted the summary, I have yes. a question. Sure. Um, I don't, and it's possible that this is a cut and paste error from time past that I should have dealt with prior, but I believe that when we do have the executive session motion, it's inaccurate to say open meeting. It should say open session in small letters. That's the actual motion. Yes. Session. Yeah. You don't call it open meeting. You call it open session. Right. Other than that, it's got all the good details, so. So I think I will read this. It will be a roll call vote to do this. Um, <clears throat> so I move to enter into executive session in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Part A, Subset 2, to conduct contract negotiations negotiations with non-union personnel, Town Manager Paul Bachman, with the intent not to reconvene in open session at the conclusion. Is there a second? Second. Whichever. <laughs> All right, so it's a roll call vote. Slaughter says aye. Brewer, aye. Brewer, aye. And Steinberg and Wald are not here. So for our friends at Amherst Media, thank you very much this evening. And we're adjourned for the evening in our open session, which it's 8, 12, 8, 13. And we'll convene in our 12. And our next regular meeting is Wednesday the 30th. Yes.
that, yes, our next meeting is on Wednesday night, August 30th. It will be a fairly full agenda. Um, parking will be one of the many topics we get onto. Um, but it's not our usual Monday night, so if you're looking for us on Monday night, the 28th, we will not be there. Uh, but we will be here on the 30th. So thank you again, Amherst Media. 